Hey, I'm Nick Gamer. Welcome back to Out of the Park Baseball 25, episode 27. Injuries have been a serious issue this season. We've been a little hot and cold at times lately. We're starting to cool off, but maintaining a decent record of late 63 and 74 right now as we draw towards the end of the season. Dylan Coleman is finally healthy and ready to come back in as one of our top guys uh, in the relief core. We are glad to have him back as Christopher Morrill has been injured again. Moderate strained oblique, which is I think the same thing that he had uh, had recovered from a couple of weeks ago and it's occurred yet again. We're down to 20 games left. 66 and 76. Looking at the pennant chase, Orioles 11 games up on the Red Sox. Magic number is 11, but it's all but done. Uh, Twins and Guardians much, much closer. Only 75 and 66 and 73 and 69, where the Orioles have you know 93 wins. Uh, the Braves are 17 up on the Mets, so they are close to clinching. The Reds, uh, they've got a healthy advantage with 80 wins, six games above above the cups but that is still long from being done as well meanwhile in the nl west two 80 win teams in the dodgers and diamondbacks and that one's still close and that's going to go down to the wire but in our division the al west it's the mariners by 11 games ahead of the rangers so we're not even in the mix for that one 94 wins for the mariners though i believe that's the best record for the american league right now uh, so we're down to the wild cards National League wild card is a wide open affair. The Diamondbacks, of course, with that 80 wins, are comfortable in the first uh, wild card seat. But it's close between the Cubs, the Mets, and then still in play the Nationals, Brewers, Giants, Padres, Cardinals, Rockies, probably a little too far back, but certainly not out of it yet. Our wild card picture the Rangers and the Red Sox. It is so close in those couple of divisional races. Those two are absolute shoe-ins. They've got a 100% playoff chance right now. Magic numbers of four and five. So this is all about the final wild card spot. Cleveland Guardians have been holding it for at least the last 30 to 40 games of the season. They're expected win-loss with 70. Okay, they're yeah, they're just above their expected win-loss right now. But their magic number is still 14. They've got a 99.6 percent chance why because they have a seven game advantage over the chasers and the chasers <laughs> well primarily it's us and the angels both at 66 and 76 right now seven games off the back but we have slipped to three and seven like i said we are down a little bit uh, from where we were right now but we have a 0.4 percent chance of making the playoffs we are not out of it and we have been well out of it at this point we've been eliminated well before this in past seasons things are going well things are definitely going well uh, the white Sox are just two games further back the average win percentage of our remaining opponents is dead even at 500 uh we have 20 total remaining games, 12 at home. That's going to help us out a little bit. White Sox only have eight at home. The Angels only have eight at home for the remainder of the season. And they also have opponents with plus 500 winning records. So there's a chance at least for us to move up that one more spot uh, to get the first spot out of the playoffs, which would be an incredible feat for this season. I don't think we're going to be sniffing a 500 record, though it's not impossible for us to get there. Of the 20 games remaining, we would need to win 15 of them to get to 81 and 81. Definitely don't think that's going to happen. But at this point, a 70 win season is finally on the cards for us, as we need to win just four of the remaining 20 to see that happen. And I think we should be able to get, you know, something pretty decent, something close to about 75 wins. And looking back on last season, our best season yet, the best season the club had had in four years, last season was 66 wins and 96 losses. We would have to lose all 20 games remaining to match that. Any, any win the rest of the way will be the best record in five years. Right now, a 9-11 and record the rest of the way. 
would get us back to the 2017 season, which was right before the team got to their winning ways, that winning streak before the money ball kind of kicked in and they had to uh, cash in. It took five days, three losses, and just one win until we finally got it. But we do have that positive record compared to last year now, 67-79 and 79 right now. We just lost three in a row, though, so we've got to bounce back. We've got to do a little bit more if we're going to get to that 75 mark. Going forward that one week, playoff picture, right? Nobody had clinched, but now we're starting to see that now that we're down to 14 games remaining. Uh, a lot of those magic numbers have been taken care of. So the Orioles, number one offense, number 12 defense, 97 wins. They're in. So are the Red Sox. Tampa Bay eliminated. Toronto eliminated. New York is a game away from being eliminated. Minnesota and Cleveland are tied at 77 and 71 now. But that's also 77 wins. That's the team that we are chasing. We are nine games behind them. So we have had our struggles this week. Uh, down four and six in the last ten. But as are the Angels. So the Angels are at least still in touching distance. But that last wild card is getting pretty dang close to, uh, to being out. Magic numbers down to seven so it's still going to take a while uh, for it to happen but uh, I can't believe where we were how bad things were to where things are turning out we've really played well uh, technically better than 500 ball uh, the last few months another bad streak I'm slipping off a little bit further here Defense is at ninth. Offense is down to 29th, so we're back into our familiar territory there. Home runs is actually up to 18th, but we just cannot hit the ball with any consistency, and we are now eliminated. Uh, and we've actually even fallen three games behind the Angels as they've won three straight. We've lost three straight. I think that might have been against each other. No. Nope, that was against Boston that we just lost three straight to, so a 90 win 91 win team with third offense and fourth defense. Very consistent. That's a team capable of, of definitely winning, even though the Orioles have 100 wins on the season right now with 10 to play. Uh, the Red Sox look like a team that's going to be tough to beat in the playoffs. The last team not yet eliminated in the American League is the Angels. And that three games ahead of us now, they're, they're just staying in play. They are the very average team that we hope to be 16th offense 18th defense they have their issues but they do enough and it's showing that they're finding a way to win here down the stretch where we're not uh, but the last playoff positions in play is that division win slash final wild card right now cleveland has pulled ahead of minnesota uh, they've had a good record of late minnesota just languishing at 500 ball here for a while and yeah, LA just staying in it for the time being uh, meanwhile the National League still has a lot left to play for the Braves and the Diamondbacks are the only ones who have clinched so far and even then only a few teams have been eliminated from playoff contention as of yet the Pirates who are dead last in defense and do not have a good offense are still you know they're still 65 and 87 i mean we would have killed for that uh the last couple of years to be well no i think defensively that's about what well not really we were about 20 21st right defensively for the last couple of years we're only four games better than them cold streak down the stretch though continues now 70 and 85 uh, we've actually slipped below the White Sox, well, tied with the White Sox here. Uh, definitely not the direction I wanted to go this late in the season, but we are at 70 wins. We are not going to get to the 75. Well, we still have seven to play. We're probably not going to get to the 75 anyway. We're down to those final five games to play now with a little bit of a streak starting to come alive. 
We've beaten Texas twice in a row. We've got two more against them. And then one more series after that to wrap up the season. We're back ahead of Chicago. We should be looking at them. 18th and 24th. We should be above them. Uh, back to within three and a half of L.A. Probably too little, too late. But it is decided Minnesota has at least clinched the playoff spot. And they're just half a game behind Cleveland for uh, the division. That's the AL all but sorted out. National League definitely getting closer with the Reds, the Cubs, Diamondbacks, and Dodgers all in along with the Braves. More teams eliminated as well as their picture is definitely narrowing. But with three good teams, the Mets look close to clinching their five games ahead. Their magic number is one. But you've got two close division races. The Mariners have joined the Orioles as the second 100-win team. The Braves at 99. There's another team that's a real contender. Fourth in offense, first in defense. Seattle's good, but only ninth in offense. Second in defense. They're going to be a tough team to knock out. Right? This is going to be one of the closest years that the Mariners have had to ever getting that first title. And I'm, I'm here for it. That's, that's the obvious team that I'm rooting for. Uh, the Orioles can't go wrong with that team. That's That's been a team to get behind for a lot of years. Final player development update of the season. A uh, couple catchers and a few pitchers all getting noticed. Uh, James Hayes, A-level. Not a great report, really. Clawed our way back up to that ninth spot. That seems to have been kind of our stable position throughout the season defensively. Offensively, we've climbed back to that 27th, and I think that's where we've been most of the season as well. 27th or 28th at least. The last weekend series here is against the Astros. We're a pretty bad team. We're five games ahead of them. We need to win two out of the three to get to that mark that I'm aiming for of 75. With a 7-1 win, we've already pulled the first of those. Now we just need to split the final two. We are 74 and 86 at the 160 game mark. Braves are the last team in contention for a 100-win season. We will play the final game, but let's see what happens in the penultimate game. Does it get us to the 75? It does. But Vientos goes down on the penultimate day of the season. Uh, Jose Suarez is ready to come back. Let's get him in, I suppose, for the final day. No, oh, we'll bring in uh, Jake Cousins. Uh, Vientos, let's, let's go ahead and move him the 10 day final day of the season we have made it to the 75 win mark uh, the team's best in five years uh, by quite some distance and matching that last year before they had a winning record adding into this last day mm, houston's got to be the favorite today right they are all over the place but with juan soto and jordan alvarez i don't know how they are losing so many games but they seem to have some pretty big weaknesses in their lineup. I mean, Trey Cabbage is hitting 159. Uh, Jake Rogers is hitting 210. Hensley's hitting 196. They're they're not supporting their uh, couple leaders very well, but that seems to be more of an issue of the management not getting the support in there anymore. They're hanging on to their couple key players, but then it falls off big time from there. It's Mitch Spence who's going to get the start for us today, and he is our weakest starting pitcher. Meanwhile, Joe Musgrove, uh, Musgrove is getting their start, and he's definitely one of their key guys. So probably not a favorite for today, but we'll see if the team can finish uh, with a, a little win streak sweeping the Astros. You know, this is our third season in, and something tells me that uh, we have not won one of these games that we have viewed. It's also the first time this, no, second time we've watched the team, right? We've watched them on opening day. It's only the second time we've seen it since they become the uh, pilots. And we're just going to do the until runners in scoring position. Uh, Moral. Nice. Nice start to the uh, bottom of the first for us. Moral opens with a double, and a dribbler is going to advance him to third. Do we make it safely, though? Whoa, we do. Beat out the throw. And that's runners on the corners with nobody out. Reyes, not a whole lot of speed, but he's able to uh, to get in there. You would think Musgrove 
probably could have or should have been able to make a play and swipe at that ball. Denzel Clark at the plate. Definitely the guy you want to have there. Strike three. <laughs> He's way late on that changeup. On the changeup. Clearly didn't anticipate that being the pitch he was going to see. And a... No, it's not a double play. It's going to sneak through under the glove of Altuve. And we're going to advance to second and third and score the opening run. And with just one out and no longer a force uh, at second, a good opportunity to snag another one. But we're going to stand there and stare at strike number three. Herbito Hernandez at the plate. He's going to drive this deep to left center field, but it's going to hang up there long enough. And we only managed to get one. But at least we do get one across. Two runs in the top of the second, though. Uh, there was a runner on first, and it must have been a home run. Are you going to sit there and hold that ball? Gosh, okay, they did get him out. Still a runner on second here. Still the top of the second. And that one is going to hang up there long enough to end the inning. But our lead was short-lived as two runs come across for Houston. Two outs at the bottom of the third. Denzel Clark has made it to second base. Tejovic at the plate, 50-50. What's he going to do? He's going to drive that well. That might drop. No, it hangs in there. That's the end of the inning. He definitely got jammed on that one. Top of the fourth sees another run come across. A second home run, a third home run, and it's 4-1. to one. We've given up three home runs, all four runs given up by Mitch Spencer have come via the long ball. Oh, now we're putting batters on by hitting them. My nickname when I was a kid, Human Ball Magnet. I was a lefty, crazy short, crowded the plate. I got right up at the front corner of the box and had a nice low stance. And pitchers just could not handle that. Uh, I had an insanely high on-base percentage uh, at that age and was fast enough to steal second and third within two pitches. Um, so always a threat to score runs. Two out, two on, top of the fourth. Definitely want to try to stop the bleeding here. And that one should do it. That'll see us out of the inning. But we've but uh, we've done nothing since that first inning and now trail five one. Looks like we are going to get that exact mark of seventy five wins this season and the streak of losing <laughs> on live game days is going to continue. Not over yet. Game's only half played, but it's just not going well so far. Bottom of the six, if we're gonna get back in this thing, now's the time. Runners on the corners and one out. Arias at the plate. Oh, gosh. Thrown out by a freaking mile. Well, now it's two outs. <laughs> strike three. Oh, and a strikeout. Two pitches. Two outs. Nothing doing. Down to our last six outs of the season. If we're going to get something done, it's really got to start happening now. Uh, and Jeremy Pena, who we brought up not so recently, or recently, a month ago. How's he doing anyway? 215, one homer, 15 RBI. Not bad for somebody who just came up uh, a month ago. Two, no, it was August. I guess he's been with us for two months, but I mean, Jeffers been with us all season. He's only got 19 RBI. Uh, Herbito Hernandez has been with us all season, 23 RBI. So not bad on that part. Plus seven stolen bases. Uh, just, you know, not a great average. But he has been a little more clutch than uh, others have been. But that is five outs remaining in our season. Christopher Morrill at the plate. Somebody you want to hit the ball a long, long way. And he is going to drive this down the first baseline. He's going to round for second base. Is he going to keep running? No, he does not. He holds for a stand-up double. Nice hit there. At this point, that's uh, that's kind of the action we need. Still five outs and getting into the heart of the order with Areas. This is a guy who can produce a single. It's a pass ball. And Morrill moves to third. 3.86 ERA. Not much stuff. Good control. 
That, that didn't look like good control there. Driven to first base. They're going to take the easy out at first. I would too with that kind of run, but that does close the gap. We finally get another run across. It's 5-2, but now we're down to just four outs remaining. Denzel Clark, now's a good time to hit the long ball and cut that gap a little bit further. Or just make yourself an easy out. No, it's an error. If you're them, I wouldn't worry too much about him trying to steal, but maybe they do worry about it. Right, it's only a three-run cushion. If I'm them, I'm focused on Mateovich and try to get him out. 50 power. He can cut the lead to one with one swing of the at bat. One swing of the bat, but he's not going to do it with that one. But he is going to get it over the head of Altuve. And we are going to get runners at the corners with two outs. And we're cooking here in the bottom of the eighth. Urias at the plate. Does have a decent amount of power. Uh, what have we done with Urias today? 0 for 3 today. He is due for a hit. Come on, buddy. It's two outs. This is, uh, well, nothing on the line, right? Nothing much left to play for. That's going to be an easy catch. No, it's not. Altuve. It slides over his shoulder. We advance. We advance again to runners on the corners and get one more across. Now it's 5-3. Our season stays alive a little bit longer. One swing, one swing here could put us on top, but Hernandez lacks the power for that type of action. Uh, I'd settle for the same sort of action we've been getting here of late, and that is a single. Nope, this time the inning's gonna come to an end, but we've closed the gap. We cut it in half from a four run deficit to two. Three outs remain on our season. One out, and Jankowski is now at second base. We've got to stop them from scoring, but it's Juan Soto at the plate. That's a problem for us, but we strike him out. That's driven hard to left, and that's going to score a run. Slides in easily to get there safe at second base, and it's 6-3. This one driven to right is going to land safely, and it's going to score another. So we've got two in the bottom of the eighth, but we've already given up two quickly and easily here in the top of the ninth to get ourselves no he held it third he held it third and with a strikeout we're finally at uh, our last set of at bats so we actually lucked out there that should have scored that really should have scored that that was uh down the line and yes we caught it off the hop but that should have been a pretty dang easy opportunity to score there uh without it we still have a slight chance to say to stay alive in this thing, but we're at the bottom of the order. Armenteros at the plate. Just need to get on right now, bud. Strike three. Or just stand there and look at Hader get his hundredth strikeout of the year. That was three straight pitches. Jeffers. Can we not uh, pinch hit for him? <laughs> like you got a catcher on the bench not only could you potentially pinch hit with him but you could pinch hit with literally anybody and bring him on then if you need to what do you have to lose apparently manager doesn't care as we stare at strike number three Final out of the season, it's Jeremy Pena, the recent call-up, who's been okay. He's going to draw ball four. A lot of looking for that bottom three. Works out for one of them. Top of the lineup, Christopher Morrill. Now we can hit the ball a long way. We can cut the deficit to one run. But we strike out. Hader gets his first save of the season on the final day, and we lose 6-3, and the streak stays alive of us losing on the final day. Or just losing on live action, period. Jordan Alvarez absolutely hammered us. He was too good. Four for five with a home run, a couple doubles, scored two runs, had two RBI, and our season ends 
with 75 wins. I'm happy for that one. Final standings for the year. Orioles end up with 105 wins. Guardians do win the Central Division at 89 and 73. The Mariners 105 wins themselves to match the Orioles' best record there at the end. Catching up, and we finish at 75 and 87. Not last, we beat the Astros of all teams and came just a couple games behind the Angels. Uh, Braves, the only other team to top 100 wins. The Diamondbacks got pretty close at 97, as did the Red Sox. And the Cubs just beat the Reds to the NL Central Division title. The others are all pretty comfortable. Well, I think it's pretty obvious who I'm rooting for in this year's playoffs, but let's see how things play out. We're going to do it quickly. Red Sox beat the Rangers in two. Guardians beat the Twins in three. Dodgers beat the Reds in three. And the Mets beat the Cubs in two in the wild card series. On to the division series. And the Red Sox currently lead one game over the Mariners. Orioles win the first game over the uh, Guardians. And the other two series have yet to begin. Told you the Red Sox look like the kind of team that could go a long way. So balanced. And they've knocked off the Mariners in five where the Orioles have knocked off the Guardians in five. So the Red Sox and Orioles, uh, an all-AL East League Championship Series for the American League, while the Braves have beaten the Dodgers in five. The Diamondbacks have swept the Mets to play it out in the National League Championship Series. The Orioles swept the Red Sox, and the Diamondbacks have beaten the Braves 4-2. So it's going to be the Orioles and the Diamondbacks in this year's World Series. And winning in five, initially going up three nothing. Uh, the Diamondbacks complete the job and are the World Series champions for this year. So Arizona Diamondbacks, uh, you could see on either side what we have for the top players out there. Uh, Corbin Carroll hit 341. Acuna hit 340. Uh, Julio Rodriguez was the best in the American League at 324, and that is. We did complete some uh, owner goals. They're happy with that part. And our season is over. Folks, this may not be what was expected at this point, but here's what's going to happen. I'm actually going to end this series here. Uh, we are far from done. 75 and 87. We're making progress. We're headed the direction we want to head. But a couple things. Um, one, the series is doing all right, but it's not doing great in terms of viewership. But... Most importantly, this game, to to an extent, is fun. But to an extent, it's a slog. This game really drags on uh, because you spend so much of your time negotiating deals at the minor league level. And if you want to be competitive, you really don't have much of a choice but to do that, to do something along those lines. And so drags on compared to a lot of other sports management games uh, it it gets less fun as as you play it i'm i'm happy with the progress we made i'm really glad that we had a, a good end to the season and that the team found some form and you know moved up and improved their record most of the light up is completely different than anything we started with is armin Taros a guy who was part of the a's organization uh, Clark was, but he was down in the minor leagues. None of the rest of that. Like All of the rest of that is guys we brought in. Yeah, Mason Miller is somebody who was in the system. and All in all, though, clearly headed the right direction. But this is a team that's still a long ways off from competing for an actual playoff spot. Still quite a few seasons before you know something would happen. But we were definitely headed the right direction, so I'm impressed with the progress we've made. But like I said, for me, the game just kind of gets boring over time, and I don't feel like I can sit through another season of it. I'm sorry, but that is going to do it for this series. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for being here. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time, and hopefully I see you in another one of my series. And I will be back with Out of the Park Baseball. I tend to do it once every couple years. I always need that year off because it's a bit on the boring side, but this has definitely been the best run that I've had in Out of the Park Baseball uh, over the few editions I've played. Uh, I like some of the changes they've made to the game, but it's still, like, managing your minor league system is still a bit of a bore. <laughs>
But thanks for being here, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.